Here we're going to have a look at a process called gas chromatography, uh, often combined with mass spectrometry. So sometimes you'll see this written as GCMS because it's often the same process, gas chromatography, mass spectrometry. And to understand this concept, you have to understand the basics of chromatography. So we go back to year seven and you've got a bit of filter paper, you dipped it in some water, you put a little black dot on the line here. This line was pencil and you left it a few minutes and then you let the colours separate and it looks really cool. You may have calculated, let's move that because that's not very good, what's called the RF value. And the RF value is, an, uh, is a measure of solubility. So I would take A and distance B. The B is the solvent front, so that's how far the water went up. A is the distance that the yellow dye went up. And to calculate the RF, I simply did A divided by B. And that was called my retardation factor, or RF value. Now, we have got the same concept in gas chromatography because, but we need to understand some of the key terms. So the water in this case is what we call the mobile phase. It's the thing that's moving. The paper is the thing that's staying still. That's what's adhering or sticking the dye or the ink to. That's what it's stuck to. That's what it's adhering to. So the water travels up and the more soluble that ink is, the further it goes. So the one, the, Inks with the colors with the highest RF value are the most soluble. So they're the ones that dissolve in the uh, mobile phase the easiest. Stationary phase stays in the same place. Now, gas chromatography looks like this. You've got your carrier gas here. Now, this is your mobile phase. That's like the water. You've got a column here, which is filled with some hydrocarbon normally. Uh, it's either solid or a liquid. And that's my stationary phase. Sample injected here, and it merges with the carrier gas. And as it goes through, depending on how easily this adheres to the stationary phase, normally by the size of the sample, depends when it comes through the detector, which is here. And that time is not called a retardation factor anymore, it's called a retention time. So the difference between when the first one goes through and the last gas goes through, and that will identify the different gases. So that separates out gases. And this thing is put into a mass spectrometer, mass spectrometer, which then figures out what the mass of each of those samples are. And you can identify the different sample, the different gases within the sample. So it separates out the gases within the sample. You've got carrier gas here. You can figure out what those samples are by using mass spectrometry. And this is a sort of a basic diagram just to go through how that works. So you've got your liquid sample, so the red and yellow, and you want to separate those out. You put in the blue, which is my carrier gas. Okay, that's my mobile phase. They separate out because of how they adhere to the stationary phase. And then they detect it at the end. 